Uh, thank you for coming today. Um, I'm very pleased to be introducing David Wolber. I'm sure you're already impressed that Alan Eustace is his opening act. And, you know, here is the real show. Um, he'll be speaking about work that he's doing at University of San Francisco. I know him from my other life as a computer science professor and uh, the wonderful work he does uh, in education and encouraging girls to go into computer science. And I'm delighted to share this opportunity with you about finding out about his research. This talk is being videotaped, so don't ask any questions with Google Confidential information um, until the videotape's off. The talk's going to go up on Google Video. So, uh, thank you. Uh, so, Alan comes, to, we, we have this program every summer for, for high school girls to encourage them into computer science. And Alan comes and in about five minutes has them talking about research. And in 10 minutes, they understand the scientific process, you know, which I, I try to teach that to my graduate students. It takes me years, you know. Um, so she does a great, great job there, and, and we have a lot of fun. Um, so I'm Dave Bulber. Uh, I'm a CS professor at USF. I, 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 I've been trying to finish my MFA in, in creative writing over there. Uh, I started it about seven years ago, um, but I had a son about five years ago, and I became the department chair about three, four years ago, and pretty much haven't written for those, those years. But one of my goals is to, to not be a computer scientist and be a writer, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, my other project is um, called whosfundingwhom.org, so I'm real interested in political software, and the San Francisco Ethics Commission came to USF and said, hey, we need some help getting our data up that people, so people can use it. And uh, we basically, you know, USF's kind of a, a Jesuit school. They, they encourage uh, public service. So what we did was we basically built um, some visualization software. So now you can go and see you know, who Newsom got his money from and, and follow funding trails and, and find out what's going on in politics in the Bay Area. Um, so pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, so years ago, I worked on a system called WebTop. And it was uh, kind of like Google Desktop shared. And the idea was kind of think of the desktop as part of the web. So we kind of analyzed the, the links within the desktop, did, did an index, of course. And then we kind of gave a tree view, a, a file manager, which had no boundaries between files and the web, and let people kind of go through inward or outward links or directory links, and kind of got rid of the distinction between different kinds of links. And that project was fun, and got about 95% done, and uh, I pretty much abandoned it. Um, but but kind of my 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 goal or my motivation for this kind of work is I, you know, I have a terrible memory. People call me the absent-minded professor. Okay, so I'm always thinking about tools to, to, as remembrance agents, something to help me as I do research to record it and, and help me work on that stuff. Um, anybody know Ted Nilsson? Some of my students have called me Ted Nelson because I'm such a scatterbrain and I work on, try to work on these big systems. Um, anyway. <coughs> So here's what I'm, I'm not going to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to talk about people in terms of the plumbing. Okay, I think a lot of times we can get caught up in FOF or XFN or RDF, semantic web, and we get caught up in you know, what kind of file formats we're going to use to transfer things around the web. And what I want to talk about here more is from the whole other level, from what kind of tools can we build for users to start adding semantics into the web and start recording their the research. Um, I'm not going to talk about social networking. Uh, the stuff I'm going to talk about is kind of uh, orthogonal, maybe, uh, but basically, it's, it's, I'm going to talk about people research as opposed to you know some kind of uh, connecting to friends and, and buddy lists. Okay, obviously, you could think of those things integrated, but I'm going to think on this side. You know, and there's 10 million systems and, and thoughts on the other side, uh, and finally. Uh, a research system, but not a research system. So, I don't know. I don't know what the hell I was talking about there. Sorry. Um, okay. So, what am I going to talk about? People research. So, people as data. I want to talk about and people beyond buddies. So, getting getting past the social network angle, and I want to think of people as first class objects on the web. 
So I think documents kind of, kind of rule the web right now. And I want to kind of think of documents and people on the same level, give them a little more credence. Um, and I also am going to talk about kind of an aggregate virtual identity. So what's it mean, you know, what is Ellen Spurtis on the web? What's the collection of all things that make up Ellen Spurtis? Uh, finally, I want you to think in terms of people as not the same as users. Okay, in most systems, social networking systems and others, the only people that exist are the users on that system. Um, and finally, I'm going to show you the system I'm, it's a prototype I'm building called Peopleicious. Um, okay, so here's my short history of the web. You know, first, a bunch of sites scattered all over. Then the Yahoo guys built their first, the, you know, the first directory bringing order through a hierarchical structure. Uh, then we got search engines, page rank, of course, in, in big bold letters. And then, you know, just a few years ago, finally we started seeing some users re-engineering the web. And Delicious was a big popular system. How many people use Delicious? Okay, you know, so Delicious is social bookmarking. And it was kind of one of the first systems that really got people to, to add annotations and semantics to the web, and, you know, adding categories. Social networking, of course, has, has taken off. And then what I see is kind of the next step is people as first class objects, whatever that means. And then maybe we're going to have some people's directories. And, and kind of as a joke, I said, you know, David's people directory. No, it's, it's going to be everyone's people directories. And I think it's going to be more than one people directory. There's going to be a lot of people directories. And I think it's going to be much flatter than Yahoo's document directory. And of course, user, user generated. Um, so that's, that's kind of a, some context for what I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, here's, here's my, you know, the big sell. We all Google people every day, right? We go and search for a person, put their name in, we get a bunch of links, and we filter. And a lot of times it's a lot of work to do that filtering. Even with David Wolber, there's a bunch of other David Wolbers. And even if there wasn't, even if my name was completely unique, you still get a bunch of junk links in there. So everybody searches, finds the links, filters, keeps them on their desktop, maybe sends an email out or creates a document which is about that person they're researching, but they don't save that information anywhere. Okay, so I, I like to call it purposely, purpose, purposelessly private data. I don't like to say it, but I like to call it that. Okay, and the idea is people have a lot of stuff on their desktops that they'd like to share, they won't mind sharing, but they don't. Okay, and let's try to get some of that out where people can take advantage of it. Um, so people are second class citizens on the web. Whenever you go look at a document, there's, there's people involved, but you can't see them. They're not, they're not around. The author, the people referred to in the document, you don't know anything about those people. They're text. That's all you got. Um, that's starting to change. Uh, finally, you know, you know, let's say we're trying to put the, the old library system online. Well, we've got a great topic catalog. Well, we've got Google search for our main catalog, but when you're talking about associative data and user data, you know, delicious and social bookmarks have given us a topic catalog, but we really don't have an author catalog or a referred to catalog. You know, here's a person, what documents do they exist in and what documents did they create? There's nowhere to go right now to get that information. So, you know, where's, where's the people in software? So search, search, you can search, and you can search for people, but, you know, there's no people that come up, right? And, there, of course, there's yellow page search, and you're starting to see people searches around. Um, delicious, when you go to Delicious, there are people there, but they're users. And they have usernames, and that's it. And what you can do is go to that username and see all the links that that person has inserted in the system. Okay, so you're starting to get a user which is a little more than just a user but has some data, but not much. What I would love is to go to Delicious and see this person has tagged this item and be able to go somewhere that says, oh, that person works at North Carolina State and here's their software they worked on, here's their blog, et cetera. Right? I don't want to have to dig for that information myself. I continually go to Delicious, see this user, and then try to find out who that person is. 
Because if I like their links, I'm going to want to know more about them and what projects they're working on. All right, so social networks. Um, people are certainly there. Uh, profile info feeds, a lot of social networks. I haven't, I haven't gotten into Orkut. They're starting to let you say, okay, these are my blog feeds. This is my delicious feed. And we're starting to get more information for each person. Um, what you don't have, you know, people are still just the users. And this is built into the system for, for a purpose. For instance, Orkut, you can only join by invitation only. And the idea is, let's, you know, let's somehow keep it restricted so we don't get a bunch of noise in, into the system. Okay, and that's, that's a good idea for social networking. But what about just people research? What about if you want to do research on people that are not users? 99.99% of the world, right? That's, that's the idea. Wikipedia, of course, is, is probably the best example of where you can add data about people to a system. Um, so anyway, we'll talk more about Wikipedia later. Uh, finally, you know, one more motivating factor. Um, you know, semantic web, wonderful, great, but we're not, not going too far. And, and what I want to see is semantic markup in a real simple manner. You know, who's the author of a page, who's referred to, and be able to come up with this collection of documents about a person. Um, we kind of need to make this bridge right here between people and, and documents, and it's not there. And this is not rocket science. Right? I think it's really easy to get caught up in, in the details of RDF and trying to say, let's come up with some system that can, can read semantic data and figure out when you should you know, schedule your dental appointment next week. Right? I'm not, I, don't, I say, let's not worry about that right now. Right now, let's get some of this basic data into our system so people can use it to find stuff. Um, okay, so let me, let me do a little demo here of the system. And uh, so here's, here's someone's blog. And the idea is, you know, as you're browsing, as you're finding things, if you find someone's blog, one thing you can do is say, okay, let's, let's kind of personify that blog. Let's, let's, let's add whoever the person behind the blog, let's add that to our database. Okay, so I've got a couple bookmarklets set up for the system, and I can say, okay, let's add a techie. And what, what Peopleicious does is it goes out to Technorati, and it tries to grab as much information as it can from, from Technorati. Uh, how many people uh, claim a blog at Technorati? Okay, anyway, Technorati, you can go there. It, Dave Wolver can go to Technorati and claim his own blog. Okay, but I can't go there and say, this is Joe Smith's blog, right? Just like kind of with social networks, it's restricted to the user talking about himself. Okay, so anyway, if, if it's there, uh, Peopleicious will go out and grab the data. So it'll grab his RSS feed, grab his first and last name, grab an image. Most of the time it's not there. Not too many blogs are claimed, okay? Um, but a lot of people, if they want to get traffic or whatnot, They'll go to Technorati and kind of set this up. Okay, so usually you're going to bring up this page and you'll have to input the information yourself. And I'm kind of the, the one power user of, of Peopleicious right now. And what I've done is I've done a bunch of research finding people, finding blogs, and I've input them into the system. And basically you go find an image form, you go find their blogs, you find their delicious name if you can, and you kind of input it in there. And all of a sudden you've got this kind of profile for a person and, you know, it's pretty nice to have. So I'm just going to click Add and add uh, Robert to my system. Okay, and all of a sudden what I have is, uh, you know, a profile for him. And, you know, it's got an RSS feed, so it goes and gets his posts. And it's got uh, this thing called person marks, which I'll talk about later. Um, I can go back and edit his info if I want. Okay, and the other thing I can do then is I can add this guy to, to lists. So and the other thing kind of people are being allowed to do on the web now is, is create lists of things. So instead of the programmer saying these are the, this is the hierarchy or this is the organization, a system like Peopleicious allows anybody to say, okay, let's make a list for this. And for people, the lists tend, tend to be 
companies or organizations, topics, or kind of types of people, something like that. But you might also think of lists of, of a more ephemeral nature, right? A conference. You're going to a conference, you might want to build a directory of all the people at that conference. Um, anyway, I'll put Robert in a couple. He's a blogger. And I'll add him as that. And I can also say, OK, let's, let's just put him in something else. So let's say he's a, an IT expert. And I can add a new list to, his, to the system. And I'm done. <clears throat> and now I've got this, this person object. He's in a couple lists. And when I go back to his, his profile here, I can now look at him in a, in a group. And so what this group view kind of gives you is it's a way to, you know, one way to look at it is a way to set up a, an aggregate RSS reader. So there's plenty of RSS readers out there. The idea behind Peopleicious is, it, you know, you've got people and their blogs, so people are kind of above each of the blogs. So right now I've got these people with their pictures, and I can go look at their data. And, uh, but if I scroll down, I can also look at kind of a by date aggregation of all their posts. So those are all from Robert Scoble, but there's John Battelle, Steve Rubell, Philip Winley. So kind of real quickly, you can create people and get a group uh, uh, RSS reader for, for all those people. OK, so once you've kind of added a person to the system, put them in a bunch of lists, then you can start person marking. Okay, and a person mark is like a bookmark in Delicious, but the idea is you can also associate the, the bookmark with a person. Okay, so if I went to Google, and I said, let's, let's search for Ellen Spurtis. Is that okay, Ellen? Google's running kind of slow today, guys. Okay, and I can go say let's 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 find a page for for Ellen. I and I've already got Ellen's blog and whatnot in here, but but here's a page I might like. And I think this is a this is a page about Ellen's work with uh, encouraging women into computer science. And so that I've got this other, this other um, bookmarklet up here, or, or people marklet. And what I can do is, OK, let's add this document to our system. And it, you know, just like with Delicious, it throws in the URL and the title. Um, and then I added a couple extra things for semantics. You can kind of say the, the type of the, the object. And then you can also you know, say what the association is. And usually the association is going to be about or authored by. Um, in this case, I think it's an article, and it's about Ellen. Authored by. Authored by. OK, <laughs> thank you. And you can type in any kind of association you want, or choose one that's, that's, that's been in there already. Uh, let's see. So now I can add this person mark to the system. And then it brings Ellen up. And if I look at the person marks, She's got a few things in here. So, so it's kind of like, OK, we've got this person, and we've got this RSS reader to look at all their blogs and their delicious posts. But let's also, we've got this other part of the web, which is not a blog, but it's just web pages. And they're all scattered about Ellen. Let's take all people's Googling work about Ellen and let them share it and say, these are the, these are the documents that matter. And so let's person mark them under her. And then what you kind of end up having is, in some sense, it's two things. One is, you know, this is what Ellen has, has written about or posted. And person marks are stuff about Ellen. Now, that's not exactly true, because person marks are either stuff about Ellen that people have put in, or stuff written by Ellen that people have put in. And it might be Ellen herself to put it in. So really, the division is, here's kind of post stuff 
blogs and bookmarks. And here's web stuff that's not one of those, but we still want to collect it under her. Um, so you kind of get a combination of, of delicious and blog reader, in some sense, connected under, under a person, is the idea. Okay, so just one one thing. So, so you know, I think if you if you could consider this place, which is the aggregate virtual person, right? And you know, right now that's Wikipedia. But if you have that, then you've got a URL, hopefully a simple URL, which you can use in blogs to refer to the person. So instead of having all these blog entries or web pages with Ellen Spurtis's text, you can have a link which takes you to. Ellen Spurtis with all her information. So for instance, here's, here's one of my blogs, and you can see all the people I refer to um, go to Peopleicious sites, and you can check out more about them. So Ellen Miller is, is from the Sunlight Foundation, and she happens to be a person I've been put into a Peopleicious for politics, and so I can click and get there, there right away. So kind of we're getting this, this sense of Here's a web with links to, to people as opposed to just text names. You know, Google's good, or search engines are good with the text names getting you to the real place, but this is a little more direct association. Okay, so a couple things about Delicious. The key, I think, about Delicious is they made it under some kind of threshold. You know, people have been working on trying to get users to add semantics to the web for a long time. And what they did with, with their bookmarklet, and now they have you know, some extensions in Firefox and IE, they made it a one-click process. Okay, and the, the funny thing is, when you're browsing and searching, you have very limited in, endurance for stopping. Right? It's kind of like when you're reading a book and you read a great passage, you want to you know, write it down and, and remember it later, but you never do. Right? People don't like to stop their process. So, you know, making it real easy to do is, is key. And, you know, with Peopleicious, with those bookmarks, it's the same idea. You're not going to stop and go to Wikipedia and add some stuff into Wikipedia, but you might click that link and say, save this under Dave Wolber, right? Okay, so delicious versus Peopleicious. You know, in both systems, you can tag documents, and, you know, both systems kind of record a tagger URL association. Um, but with Peopleicious, you can create people, you can create person URL associations, and that could be any kind of association like about or author. Um, that's what I call person marking a document. You can do person feeds, and then of course person, person lists. And you know, kind of in vogue right now is, is people tags. Uh, there's a system like Tagalag, there's a bunch of systems starting to do this. Really what I've got, you know, I call them lists, but really they're, they're tags. They're just not single word tags. They can be whatever you want to, want to call them. And they're also objects. You can, you can add information about the list. So they're not raw tags, but they're in the sense of the same as, same as tags. Um, so yeah, to people mark is to mark a web resource as being authored by, about, or concerned in some matter with a particular person. Um, okay. so. You know, what else do we need to do? Well, uh, you're starting to see this in some social networking systems, but even with Delicious, it's, it's noisy. The whole world posts there, right? And I think people are, the you know, trend is let's, let's start breaking this down and let's let people build smaller communities which have the same software. Um, so with Peopleicious, you can create these domains with separate home pages. Um, IBM's working on this and in, in, in they have something called Fringe Contacts. With, which is a, a people tagging system. Um, <coughs> one idea which I haven't done is allow users to define domains. By domains, I mean pretty much a whole new site. So a user could come to Peopleicious and say, you know what, I want a site for my conference I'm building, set it up, and it would automatically set it up. Uh, right now, I have to go in the database and make three changes and I can add a new domain. I'll show you a couple of those later. Um, one system that, that does this is called People Aggregator. And People Aggregator is a social networking meta site. Okay, and they basically let a user go and say, 
set me up this new social network site about, you know, for these people and go get the data from these other social network sites. Um, so people aggregator is kind of a, let's let people set up domains within social networking and people is just trying to do the same thing. Okay, so quick scenario. Uh, at USF, you got a bunch of professors that love to go to parties and talk about themselves, okay? But they don't like to keep their web page up to date and they don't have a web presence at all, usually. You know, as you get younger and younger, it gets better and better, okay? So um, the dean sends out emails every once in a while saying, oh, you know, this person's doing some cool stuff. Um, development and media team are completely ignorant. They have no idea what the faculty is up to. Um, it's only the dean's emails or talk that, that where they get their information from. There's nowhere to go to see what the, the faculty at USF are doing. And that's what the development people, of course, need to get, to get grants. You know, people will come and say, do you have an expert in this area? You know, they, they don't know. So we're going to build a people-licious for USF. Um, Oh, that's, sorry, that's just my dean. Uh, let's see. So here's the, here's the homepage for, for Peopleicious, or for the people of USF. It's, it's the same software, but this is a completely separate site than the techie site I was showing you earlier. Um, and basically, you can just set up these domains, and this one's for USF. And you, know, you can see, you're going to have your typical hierarchical or kind of organizational structure with the departments. But then you're also going to have topics, and you're also going to have smaller community groups. You know, one big problem with universities is you've got these people in these departments that are working together, but there's no organization for it, and nobody knows they're working together. Um, so, like, inter-department inter research is kind of hard to do, and it gets lost. Um, so the idea here is let's let people make lists of any kind, and we can kind of keep track of all these the communities that exist within the, within the university. <laughs> Um, well, I won't go through the, the website, but you, you guys have probably seen websites like this. If you go to usfca.com or .edu, it takes you nine links to find a professor. Okay? And even myself, who've been there a number of times, it took me like 10 minutes yesterday to find my webpage from the USF site. And there's nowhere to go to find who's doing some kind of topic. There's just nothing there. Once you get to a professor's site, you know, it says what university they went to. That's about it. Maybe a link somewhere else. Okay, it's just horrible. I think a lot of organizations are the same. Okay, for a corporation, oops. So I, I made one for, for Google, and this is, this is you know, kind of interesting, you know, corporations may not be so happy about such a, such a thing. You know, their employees are, you know, their value. Okay, so this, this is a question of transparency versus privacy, and the fact that we're allowing people to, to add persons and data about others and not just themselves, you know, kind of opens up this big, this big question. Now, certainly it would be of value to people to be able to go to a site, which is a directory of all Google or Yahoo employees, including what they're working on and what kind of relationships. People would love to do this, but there's nothing out there that, that allows you to do it. Um, now, obviously, you know, there, there could be problems with lawsuits and that kind of thing, but it's an interesting question. Um, the other thing I, I look at is kind of academics research in general. You know, there is nowhere to go right now to say, what's the landscape like in computer science? What professors are working on what in computer science? There's nothing. Basically, you have search engines, and you just do all your work yourself. Now, I would love to know, for instance, you know, who's studying folksonomies in academia? You know, what are the AI groups at Stanford, MIT, and Cal? I can go find that stuff. Right? I can go to their websites and, and figure it out, but it's going to take me a long time, and I'm going to keep that information to myself. Maybe I'll email it to somebody. You know, if you had a collaborative site where people could put this information in, you could create a very valuable resource. Uh, the other thing is, you know, what are the most recent blog entries by computer scientists? You know, who has blogs? 
You know, really, no one, no one knows this. You can go to Technorati or some of the, some of the blog search engines and, and find this out. <coughs> um, this is another thing about the research process. Here's how I do research. Now I go to Sightseer or Google, scholar.google, scholar and I find a paper. You know, I used to go to the damn library and find a paper, and it was even worse. I'm, I'm pretty old. But now I can go find papers. But when I go to those places, I get the paper, I get the author names, and that's it. There's no link to get the authors. Those authors are just, just text. Right? So I would love to have people as part of Google Scholar. Because all I do always is find the paper, or if it's not available, I go to the author's site so I can get the preprint, the PDF, that they're allowed to put on their website. But what I want to do is go find other projects they're working on, other people they're working with, and do that stuff. I do that all the time. But there's no tool to kind of help me with it. <clears throat> uh, I already talked kind of about a conference directory, um, but it's kind of an example of an ephemeral directory. And the other one we're working on is this, this, uh, this idea of, you know, ever since Dean started his campaign, you know, so many years ago, there's a bunch of political websites, and, and every politician now has a blog or a web page, and there's information, obviously, about politicians from news reports, but it's scattered. It's all over the web. There's no way to find out, for instance, you know, all the people running for governor, what they're up to. Okay, so I built this political site. It's called opencampaigns.com. And, you know, one of the interesting ones is I put in, uh, you know, the gov governor candidates. And uh, you can go there and you can get a kind of by date listing of Arnold and Phil's um, blog posts. What's happening? But it's very interesting to be able to build these lists of candidates for some election and be able to see what they're talking about in one place instead of having to go find it your, yourself. Um, and it's real quick and easy to, to build these. <clears throat> okay, so just real quickly, I'll talk about some related systems, but here's kind of the landscape of, of information and user-generated information. You've got people, you can tag people in some sites, but people are, are pretty wary of this. Okay, tag lag is one of them. Um, Ziki allows you to do this, a couple other ones. You got traditional profile information that kind of all social networking systems are starting to provide. Um, people are starting to be able to create lists on the web. Uh, Jedi was, was a system that kind of was one of the early systems to do this. Amazon's got their list mania. Okay, but this is a big change allowing users to create lists as opposed to the list being predefined. Um, you've got posts and bookmarks. And then, you know, I've been talking about the fact that there's these web pages out there that are authored by and about people, and those are kind of in this area where you know we don't know what people they're about. And then Delicious allows us to tag web pages, and uh, you know social networking systems allow us to you know make people people associations. Um, so that's kind of the whole landscape, and people are starting to add stuff to various different kinds of systems. So Ziki is a real real nice one. Ziki.com is the link. And they give you profile information, feeds. You can create groups. Ziki is like, like my Peopleicious system, but it's, a, it's not a prototype. It works. Okay. And um, the key difference, though, is you can only specify stuff about yourself. Okay. So they took the, the social network model and said, Let, let's keep that. And you know, there's advantages to that. Your information is a little bit more, um, you can accept it more readily. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are not users of Ziki, right? And you'd like to do research on them. <clears throat> and they also don't combine with uh, social bookmarking. Um, Plaxo, anybody heard of Plaxo? Okay, Plaxo is, is kind of address books on the web. Um, you, can, you can put real basic profile information. The nice thing is, you know, every user changes their own. So instead of having an address book on your book on your desktop, it's all centralized. And if they change their information, you know about it immediately, as opposed to everybody having all this old information about all their contacts. Uh, pretty cool thing, uh, but traditional information. 
Uh, Tagalag is, is the people tagging system I, I've mentioned a couple times. Uh, kind of a weird thing, but I think they do this for also to, to add credence to, to the users. You can only tag people if you know their email. Uh, kind of like LinkedIn, you can only link in with someone if you know their email or if you pay 20 bucks a month or something. I think they think rich people are more reputable. Um, okay, so what about people tagging? You know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, I, I don't want to do this. You know, you, people think of the ugly list, right? You could go to Peopleicious right now, create a list called ugly and start putting people in there, right? So there's this idea of someone could spam or just flame and it's right out there for people to see. And, you know, you can tag documents and the document's not going to cry, right? So when you're tagging people, it's, it's a little touchy. It's a little scary. Uh, you got this idea of lawsuits and people are also touchy about kind of privacy issues, big brother issues. You know, I, you know, we're building this directory of people, you know, scary, right? Um, but, you know, one of the keys here is there's a lot of people out there, people are doing research on them all the time, and most of those people are not users, right? Some of them are dead, right? There's all kinds of people we'd like to do research on and you know, restricting yourself to only allowing people to talk about themselves is a huge restriction. You know, we don't do it in the world, right? I can say, um, you know, Milan Kundera wrote The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And that's not controversial. That's a simple statement. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with Peopleicious, right? This document was written by this person. You know, it's pretty basic information. Um, the other thing is, you know, people really want to track their own identity, but it's hard to do. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys go, and if you've got systems out there or you've got blogs out there, you want to see who's talking about you or who's written a, an article about you. And so you're continually looking at different search engines trying to find that stuff. The idea here is let's get it all in one place and you can kind of keep track of yourself. <clears throat> Okay, so mitigating factors. One, I think the big place this stuff's gonna work is within the enterprise, right? Let's keep it within a domain. The people of USF, only USF people can add information, right? They can add information about any person, but your user set is restricted, and that takes away a lot of the problems right there, right? Because they, you know, they have a job, and they don't wanna, they don't wanna lose it. So I think the enterprise is where you're really gonna see a lot of movement. And that's what IBM is, is pushing for with their people tagging system. Um, I talked about restricted specification. We're not talking about, in people issues, I don't allow people to put comments in. You can't even say this person, I don't like him. There's no, there's no field for that. There's just links, right? Here's their blog, here's their delicious name, you know, basic stuff that is kind of non-controversial. Of course, I could link a web page to Joe that's about you know Nazi Germany or something, and you know that would be that would be a bad thing. But it's you know it's much less likely if you kind of restrict what they can do. Now the other the other thing is you know, and I don't know how to do this, but you know pretty much the web is anonymous right now, and people like that expect it. I think we're going to start seeing, and you're already seeing this trend of real identities. So the users ha are their real self and have their real names in there. And that changes the whole dynamic of what's going on. And you're starting to see this pop up in a lot of systems. Okay, so the key system, Wikipedia, they want to distinguish it from Peopleicious. Well, Wikipedia is not hard to add information, but it's, it's basically you know, adding HTML. You have to go to Wikipedia, open up a form, and enter some text. Okay, not that big a deal, but you're not going to do this during the browsing process, right? The idea with Peopleicious is, no, let's just let them do one click and connect this link to a person. Um, and I think that's a key one. The other one is, you know, structured data versus HTML. So you could think of a, a system that allows users to enter a bunch of structured data, and if you have a web service on top of that, all of a sudden you've got data that software agents can really use. Right, Peopleicious is all HTML. So it's real difficult for agents to get at the data and do anything with it. Okay, you could think of uh, Wikipedia adding micro formats and, and kind of adding some semantics and structure within those web pages. But right now, it's, it's not there. 
Um, the other thing is perspectives. And with Wikipedia, users are collaborating on this one web page about a person. You know, the idea with just putting in links is, you know, every user, you could look at Ellen Spurtis as specified by computer science professors, right? Because it's just links and you know the editor of each link. It's not HTML that's getting overwritten and rewritten, right? So you've got this idea of, I can browse as some user, some expert, or I can browse as some, some list of people, and I can get a different perspective on a person when I browse through there. <coughs> and this is a huge, a huge difference. You know, because a, you know, a big problem <coughs> with public sites is anybody can add information. And really what you want is this web, which is engineered through different perspectives to give you a different look. Right? I would love to be able to just see the web as the bookmarks of all Google employees. Right? That would give you a much better experience, probably, if you think Google employees are smart than, than the general web. And that's the idea here. I don't think you can really do that. You know, Wikipedia is not going to allow that because it's unstructured, unstructured data. Uh, just one other system, uh, common gate. Uh, so one problem with the way people issues is set up is when you go to one of these lists, if it's a topic, you see all the people that are involved with that topic. The problem is those people are not really single entities, right? Everybody's got multiple personalities. So if I go to uh, social networking, I'm going to see Ellen, and I'm going to see her posts, but some of them aren't going to be about social networking. Okay, so you know, one idea is let's, you need to break up topics and people and give kind of a you know, way to get between both. Now, Common Gate is a system that does that. You basically go there and you post a blog entry and you say, okay, I want it to be in these topics. Okay, it also gets filed under you and any of the groups you're in. But you basically got a way to say, okay, let's go to that topic and see all the entries for that. And then let's go see this person and see all their entries. So it does a little better job, but it's, you know, it's a closed system. It doesn't work with existing blogs. It's like MySpace. You create a blog within the system. You know, so it's not going to work with the existing landscape. But pretty cool idea. Uh, just some other related systems. People feeds, uh, Zimbio, uh, Groo.ps, Magnolia. Uh, Yahoo's MyWeb, you know, you know, of course, is, you, you, know, you, can, you can share your bookmarks with trusted uh, buddies, basically. Um, and there's millions of others. This, you know, definitely, as you guys know, you know, the social networking arena is full. There's all kinds of systems coming out. And you know, I, I think you're also seeing a lot of uh, people systems. Okay, couple couple issues. One is is the UI challenge, and I think you know this is not real exciting stuff, but this is the key to actually getting people to add semantics to the web. You've got to make it real easy. Um, could it be integrated with search? Ellen and I were talking a little bit about. You know, as Google search results come up, it'd be nice to be able to say check, 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 boom, right? But you have to be, you know, part of the search engine for that. Um, all the browser plugins that are coming out now uh, are huge. People are starting to use those and they make it real easy to do one-click saves, right? Um, anyway, Jedi, this is, this is Jedi actually on the side here. They've got a plugin and they've got this thing called, you know, drop anything here to start a, a jetpack. A jetpack is a list of stuff. You know, so my idea is, what would be nice is be able to choose a person within, your, within the extension, have that person sitting there, and then you go to Google and do the search like I did before, and you can just drag stuff over. So immediately you can create these document person associations in a very easy and quick manner. Uh, I don't have that right now because all I have is the bookmarklet. You know, it's not integrated with the browser. So I think you need, you need the extension to do it. Okay, search. And these are questions I, don't, I definitely don't know the answer for. You know, what should be indexed for a person? So what I've got now is their blogs, their delicious posts, and all these web documents that people have added to them. Okay, that's a lot of data. You know, do I want to index all the keywords in all those documents you know, for, for a person? I, I, I don't know. Do I want to do a little extra analysis and only come up with the the top most characteristic words, 
Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough question. I don't know how it's, how it's going to be answered. You know, it, you know, in regular search, you've got a single document that you're indexing. You know, here we've got a bunch of documents which are about a person. What do we use for our, for our search? Um, person rank, a lot of people working on reputation schemes. Uh, it's, a, it's a good, interesting research question. The other thing is I want you to think about is this personal web neighborhood, right? So, okay, we've got this virtual identity of a person. It's all these links. What about the neighborhood of that area, right? All those documents point to the web. So if you could go to some expert and say, I want to search within his neighborhood or her neighborhood, right? It's going to give you a, a subset of the web which is kind of their perspective on it and be able to search only within that as opposed to search within the whole, the whole world. Um, so first, of course, you need this kind of virtual identity to be created, and then you need to build a crawler, or a personal crawler, to kind of go and build that index. Pretty interesting thing. <clears throat> uh, I'll say a little bit about pers you know, multiple personalities, but I, I think I mentioned it before. You might want to think of a person as in things, and then those in things can have posts and information about them. Really, on the web, at least, we are more than one person, each of us. Um, so you might want to think about personalities within, within each person. You know, break a person's brain down into its parts. Okay, you know, one other way to look at what's going on today is, is, is you know, power is going from, from the programmer or the DBA to the, to the users. And not even necessarily the users, but to non-programmers. So you can think of allowing administrators to add structure and information to a site. You know, the, the big problem is any change, like I work with a lot of, of government agencies, any change in their software costs a lot of money and they can't do it. They don't have the money. It just stops. A single tiny little change. So if you can set it up where people can create lists and create some, some organization without going to a programmer, it's, it's huge. So, you know, tagging is a big first step there. Lists on the web. But I think, you know, kind of a generalization of what Peopleicious does is, you know, letting people create objects. You know, not the data in the objects, but the, the data structure. So I've created a people object, and, you know, I've set the fields for those people as a fixed set of fields. Blog post, delicious name, image, et cetera. You know, but you could think of allowing a non-programmer to say, you know, here's a book, and a book is defined by an Amazon link and a, you know, library link and a title, ISBN number, but allow the, the non-programmer to say, I want an object like that. Give me a form that allows me to put it on it. You know, it's kind of the next step after Ruby on Rails. Anybody use Ruby on Rails? You know, Ruby on Rails makes it real easy for a programmer to create a, a website. And this would be the step of kind of, you know, putting it into the end user hands. <laughs> it's not a big leap. Um, anyway. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm done, I think. A uh, couple more minutes? No? Yeah. Anyway, re related projects. I think, I think adding people to Google, scholar.google would be an excellent idea. Um, I don't know about ORCID and, and those sort of things, but I think in Scholar it would be a, a fantastic addition. Um, anyway, the takeaway is people is a top-level organizing thing. People marks, people list doesn't have to be the same as a user list. And then finally, you know, what can we do with a virtual person? Once we have that information, how can we use it? Um, and finally, I think a key is is let's get let's re-engineer the web through different perspectives, and you know that that will give a much smaller and better view for people to to use the web. Uh, anyway, thank you.